A new study by the Institute of Policy Studies found that even if Singapore increases the, pro the proportion of foreigners in its midst, the population will still get older and the labour growth rate will still fall. But it says immigration could slow down these effects. The report takes into account the country's non-resident population. This includes those on work permits, long-term social visit passes and foreign students. The report sets out three scenarios. One, where the proportion of foreigners remains at 25% of the total population. Two, where this proportion drops to 20%. And three, where the proportion is raised to 33%. For all scenarios, it's assumed that Singapore will take in 30,000 new citizens or permanent residents every year, and the country's total fertility rate remains at 1.24. The report puts Singapore's population at 6.8 million in 2030, up from the current 5.2 million, if the proportion of foreigners in the population is raised to 33%. And while the average population will still get older, a higher proportion of non-residents will slow this process down. At the current fertility rate, with 30,000 new citizens or PRs a year plus non-residents in the mix, the support ratio for Every elderly person aged 65 and above to a working adult is 1 is to 10.3. In about 20 years, this will be half to 1 is to 5.1 even if the proportion of foreigners in the country goes up to 33%. With or without foreigners, the labour force will be hit. Even with the bumped-up crop of foreigners, the report shows that the labour force will grow far less than the historical average of 3.6% a year. With the current proportion of 25% of foreigners in the midst, the labour force will grow by 1.04% over the next 10 years. Raising the proportion to 33% will see the labour force grow marginally to 2.47% annually over the same period. For all scenarios, the labour growth rate will plunge to about 0.25%, by 2050. Economists say this isn't necessarily a bad thing as slower labour growth rate will force productivity up. 3 to 4 percent labour force growth, 2 to 3 percent labour force growth. Uh, a labour force growth more characteristic of developing countries. We are a developed country, you know, we should wake up, grow up and be a developed country. And the consensus among economists at the forum is that the proportion of foreigners in the country should be kept at the current 25 percent or even lower at 20 percent. Any more and the country may lose lose the drive to be productive. In Singapore, the population conundrum is as much an economic as it is a political issue. The high immigration inflows the country saw during the economic boom years has led Singaporeans to feel the impact of having foreigners in their midst in their daily lives. So observers say the issue of integration becomes even more important and the country has to do better in integrating foreigners. I think uh, the debate needs to be broadened out. Uh, I think what we will we'll find is, is that um, there is a social uh, dimension beyond the economic. Uh, there's, there's a trade-off between uh, the quality of life and the social ties. The IPS report comes just a week after a similar paper was issued by the National Population and Talent Division. An SMRT official today testified that rail claws continued to dislodge even after they were secured with cable ties following the massive train disruptions last December. And from as early as April last year, several irregularities were detected within the affected area. After the December disruption, cable ties were placed over all claws on the north, south and east-west lines to prevent them from dislodging and causing the third rail to sag. As MRT line manager Lok Kwok Hung told the court, there have been instances where claws still got dislodged. When asked why, he said the cable ties used were normal industrial ones and not special ones. Evidence also seemed to indicate that the area where the third rail had sacked in the 17 December disruption to be problematic. Prior to the incident, checks of the third rail by the multifunction vehicle or MFV showed instances where measurements went past the safety tolerance levels. Engineering Trains Branch Senior Manager Wong Tensin said his team would flag such problems to the relevant maintenance personnel for rectification. Mr Wong was also quizzed over the cracked mirror and loss of MFV images during inspections hours before the disruption. Uh, Mr Wong told the court that there shouldn't be a link between the cracked mirror of the multifunction vehicle and the loss of images. But he said it's possible that the sagging of the third rail could have caused the mirror to crack. He said since then he's been told that several pieces of the cracked mirror have been found at the incident site. 
The Singapore Police Force is installing more CCTV cameras around the island and will reorganize more neighborhood police centers under the new community policing model. The plans were unveiled at the Police Work Plan Seminar and Exhibition. Keeping Singapore safe and sound and free from terror threats is one key priority of the Singapore Police Force. But also important, improving policing within a community. 700 more CCTV cameras will be installed at HDB blocks and multi-storey car parks by year's end. Six more neighbourhood police centres will also be reorganised under the new community policing model. And Singaporeans will soon see traffic police officers in this new uniform. The main improvement will be the riding jacket as well. We will feel that we are more protected with the elbow, shoulders and the spine paddings on our body so that we will feel more confident as well. And this riding jacket is also very comfortable over the past year. In his speech, Mr Teo said sustaining the community's trust in the police is key. He added even with the best officers and training, mistakes may occur from time to time. But some mistakes are intolerable. If the mistake arises from a deliberate misuse of powers, unethical or self-serving behaviour, we will investigate and discipline such officers appropriately to ensure that the Singapore Police Force is upright and honourable and to send a message that the force does not tolerate wrongful behaviour in our offices. And while Singapore remains one of the safest cities in the world, Mr Teo says the police must look ahead to meet the demands of the future. More pedestrian crossings will have the Green Man Plus feature by next April. The scheme currently gives the elderly more time to cross the road, but it will be extended to some 7,000 pedestrians with disabilities by the end of this month. Users will hear an alert or feel a vibration when they tap their new Green Man Plus card on a special reader. This will notify them that the Green Man sign will flash longer in the next cycle, for an average of five seconds more. The Land Transport Authority has started installing card readers at over 230 pedestrian crossings in 13 housing estates.